Coming up on Hands On iOS, look, you've got podcasts, you love them, you think they're great, but you wanna share them with people. And I don't know about you, but I've tried saying, hey, you should subscribe to this podcast. And the person's like, oh yeah, I'll do that. And then you go to them and they're like, I have no idea how this works, how do I subscribe? We're gonna go over that. Plus we're gonna go over what it's like to use different apps from the default that come with your device. So stay tuned, it's all about podcasts and it's about to get exciting. Hands on iOS is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. So mom, uh, you should subscribe to my podcast. That is a thing that I've said several times. And then afterwards, it involves me going in and having to sort of describe the process for actually subscribing. You who are watching this, if you're watching it on YouTube or if you're listening to it uh, on one of your podcasts, you know how it works. You know how to get the show. But what if you want to let other people know how they can enter the world of podcasts and experience the joy I hope that you get out of all of this? That is what today's episode of Hands on iOS is about. And we're going to kick things off with the simple step. We're going to show you how to subscribe to my show. But of course, this can be applied to any podcast. Most podcasts are going to have some site, some website that you can go to that has links for you to subscribe. And that is meant to make the process more simple because of the way that links work with iOS. Many of the different apps have what are called direct links or deep links. And these links allow you to simply tap a button, open directly in the app, and subscribe to the show. So we're going to go to Safari on my iPad here. And you can see that I'm already on the twit.tv website. How handy. It's like I set this up beforehand. And then we're going to find hands on iOS. So I'll do twit.tv slash H-O-I. We head there and you can see that as we always mention at the end of the show, there are different buttons that you can tap on to subscribe to the show in different formats. So maybe you are a Spotify user and you want to get your podcast in there. Yes, that's right. Spotify does support podcasts. It's as simple as tapping on that button. When I tap on that, Boom, Spotify automatically opens up. Hello, there's hands on iOS right there. So deep linking is one of the easiest and most simple ways of actually subscribing to a show. And when you send this to someone who's trying to figure out how to subscribe to a podcast, you can say, look, go to the page that they suggested on the web and then look for the podcast app that you use uh, on the list and then subscribe there. So, you know, maybe your podcast app is, is listed here, so you can easily tap on one of those and open it up in Spotify and Pocket Casts and Google Podcasts or what have you. But what if it's not? What if you actually want to be able to access that podcast in a feed that isn't, in a service that isn't one of these listed? Well, that is where the beauty of podcasts comes into place. It's just like a blog feed. It is an RSS feed that lets you use whatever app or service you're wanting to use to actually subscribe to the show. So you can see that we include uh, at Twit a button here at the end that says subscribe via RSS. Now what I want is the URL that is behind that link. So I will hold down on subscribe via RSS and hit copy. That copies the URL. And then I will go into a podcast app. In this case, I'm going to use Pocket Casts. So Within Pocket Casts, I want to find that direct link. I go down to the bottom and I tap Discover. I go to the search bar at the top and I simply Command V, paste that link into the URL. I hit Return and voila, there is Hands on iOS. Now, those of you who are loyal Twit subscribers, you probably know a little bit about this because of the fact that anytime a new podcast launches, it takes a while for these podcasts to actually show up in the different directories and the different podcast apps that you're using. So when Hands on Android launched, you may still be having trouble finding that actual uh, show in the podcast app that you use. So if I go back to Safari, I go to twit.tv slash Hua, that's H-O-A, for hands on Android. I scroll down, I hold down on subscribe via RSS, I hit copy, 
I come into Pocket Casts and I paste that link and search for it. Ha! There it is. Hands on iOS in audio. Hands on Android, excuse me, in audio format. I can subscribe to the show. Sorry, Jason, I wasn't subscribed yet, but I am now. Um, that is a good way when a new show is launched before it pops up, or if you're having trouble finding it. I mean, there are a lot of shows that have similar names to others, and so this direct link is a way for you to get to it. So let's do a little bit of a rewind to talk about sort of what we've learned thus far. And this is for, again, the person who is not so sure how to subscribe to a podcast. They know they're out there. They know that they're little audio or video bits that they can download and listen to every day, but they're not quite sure how this works. Well, the best thing that you can do for them is send them a direct link using whatever podcast application you know they have. If you are watching this show, then they're probably on iOS, which means that they have the podcasts app at the very least. So if I go to Safari, and boy, this is kind of fun, hands on Android, listening to it on Apple Podcasts, I hold down on the listen on Apple Podcasts button, I hit copy, or I can actually just hold down and hit share, and then I want to send a message to my mom, for example. So I would, or I could send it to Jerry. Hmm. No, I think I'll send it to my mom. I tap on that, and then it sends the link directly to my mother. Now, whenever she opens up that link, it will open that podcast app directly in the Apple Podcasts service. So I'm going to open it here. So then it pops up right there, and you can see the subscribe button. Now, if you're out there wondering, if you're watching this because someone sent it to you and you're wondering, what does it mean when I subscribe? Because this actually is a question that I've got before. Uh, a person thought, because generally subscriptions cost money. And so they thought, okay, is it like I'm subscribing to a newspaper? How is this being paid for? How does this work? Well, the subscribe button is much more simple than that. It's basically a way of telling the app, hey, I like the show and I wanna get new episodes every time. Our shows here at Twit, they're ad supported meaning that we have sponsors who sponsor the different shows on the network, and that is how we make our money. We don't make our money from you paying to listen or watch the shows. So you pressing that subscribe button, all that does is it lets you get every new episode as soon as we publish it, and that is what that button is for. Depending on the app that you use, it may download it immediately, it may download it upon you clicking play. There are a lot of apps out there that will actually let you stream without ever having to download the show. Spotify, of course, is one example of that. Uh, let's now talk a little bit about some of the features that you can get outside of the default normal apps that you might use. If you're using iOS, then chances are at some point you use the podcast app. The podcast app is pretty good. Uh, you have your simple play pause button, your skipping back or skipping forward buttons, your ability to increase or decrease the speed of the show, as well as some settings for being able to share the podcast and if the show has notes, see some of the notes in the show. But a lot of the people who are really into podcasts like to take a step out of the podcast app, and I wanna show you why that's the case. You're gonna notice that if you go looking for a podcast app, there's a lot of feature parity between the major apps that are out there. Uh, if you're not a Spotify user, uh, then, or, or a, a default app user, then you've probably heard of Pocket Casts, Overcast, Castro, and some of the other players on the market. Uh, again, a lot of those features have sort of reached parity between the different services, and it comes down to a choice in design and the user experience within the app. I'm gonna talk about Pocket Casts here because again, I can sort of talk about some of the features that are available across the services. Pocket Casts just happens to be the app that I choose to use. So we'll launch Pocket Casts, and as much as I love Jason, we're going to use my podcast as an example. And so I will go to Hands on iOS, and you can see there that I'm subscribed. Uh, I'm gonna use the audio form. So we will talk about my f uh, first episode here, which is a setting about using accessibility uh, that lets you sort of change the brightness of your screen. So that episode has been downloaded to my stream. And I'm going to start playing that episode now.
So normally it plays just how you'd expect. You've got uh, all of your controls here. If you're 15 seconds back, you're 30 seconds forward, and your simple play pause controls. The notes are often a little bit more uh, in depth. You get more than you would get from a standard podcast application. You can see the date it was published. You can see how long the show was. And you also, with these apps, often get the ability to see how often the show is released. So it gets smart as episodes are published and figures out, okay, it looks like the show is a weekly show, so it says released weekly, and you can count on the next episode publishing on February 20th. That is one of my favorite features because if you come across a new show or someone shares a show with you and you're like, do I really want to add this to my podcast quota? Do, am I going to have time to watch this? Well, it turns out it's a bi-weekly show so, or fortnightly show, meaning that it publishes every two weeks. So it's not as hard to sort of fit that in. With this show, Hands on iOS, it is a weekly show, but each episode is less than 10 minutes. So you don't have to worry about me taking up too much of your time with this. All right, so let's talk about uh, one of the reasons why you might want to use a third-party app that makes it a little bit different from the other apps that are out there, the, the default apps that come with your device. Well, it's all about those extra features. You may choose to organize your podcast differently. You may listen to them differently. You may uh, want to subscribe to them differently, and different apps will provide that. But there are some features that have pretty much reached parity between them, and those features are based around the actual audio listening experience. There's a feature that across the different apps and services is something like volume boost or voice enhance or uh, audio enhance or volume enhance. And we'll talk about that one. And then of course, there's a feature for trimming the silence or uh, some folks call it smart speed. Smart speed, trim silence, etc. It all works the same and it's all pretty magical. So I have an episode of iOS Today here. I want to use an episode where it's two folks talking back and forth to show off this feature called Trim Silence. Trim Silence essentially works to make the podcast a little bit zippier. In a normal conversation as you're talking to someone, there are lulls in the conversation. There are times when one person is thinking and one person is not speaking and you notice those normal gaps. But when you're listening back, you kind of don't really need those. You just want to hear the show. And that is what this feature allows you to do. So I'm going to hit play on this podcast. And you can hear the conversation so happening. And then I'm going to turn off trim silence. So it's currently off. And as you're listening, you might notice that there are some normal pauses in between the audio. Then I'm going to turn it on. CarPlay would work with it as well, yes. which would be great uh, because then you don't really, you never take your hands off the steering wheel. Which and what's kind of nice, this and you probably notice that as we're conversing, to, uh, there aren't really any gaps between what I'm saying and what Leo's uh, so saying, as, a third -party unit, as well as what I'm saying, there aren't many controls. gaps between those. Uh, that's so I'll hit pause here really quickly to kind of talk about this feature. Uh, most of the podcasts have to do this too, but uh, right here in Pocket Casts, you can see that it says, in total, You've saved five days, 11 hours, 24 minutes, and nine seconds using this feature. Over the course of my entire history with Pocket Casts, I've saved an entire five days of my life by not hearing those little bits of silence between the show. So as I'm listening to, po to podcasts, it actually is calculating all of the little trims that it takes out to let me know that I haven't had to listen to five days, 11 hours, 24 minutes, and nine seconds of silence, which is pretty incredible. That feature is awesome, and it gives you a little bit of a zippier listening experience without actually having to use the speed boost, which can start to make the podcast sound really weird. Uh, and in some cases, depending on what service you're using, may change the pitch too. So suddenly you're listening to Alvin and the Chipmunks instead of Leo and Micah on iOS Today. Now the next feature, volume boost, voice enhance, etc., is a really handy feature. Uh, one of my favorite podcasts is a show called Dragon Friends. It is a podcast where a bunch of improv comedians from Australia get together and play Dungeons and Dragons. The show is slowly but surely reaching more popularity, and so at this point, they are able to have some professionals on the team who help them with their audio. But if in the beginning, that was not the case. And so listening back to those episodes, you'd have people that were really quiet, some people who sounded like they were talking directly into the microphone. 
and everywhere in between, it was not pretty. Volume Boost, it works to sort of normalize the audio between the different speakers. And so regardless of if you have a quiet speaker or a loud one, it kind of brings it all together in the middle and lets you hear everything that's playing. So I tend to leave that feature on, but I'm gonna play iOS today without it, and then we'll turn it on and you can kind of hear the difference. The big features that they tout, because not everyone does. You have to so here's with it off. For certain ones. Yeah. In fact, and I should note that our show does a pretty good job with uh, normalization and equalization. So you're not gonna notice it as much with this show. But let me show you. But then we'll turn it on. I think that's the eject. Your DVD and you may notice a little bit of a difference <laughs> there. Hilarious. Again, with different shows, you're going to notice that more, and, and some you'll notice it less. Uh, but because of that, it's just one that I keep on all the time. That way, the voices are clear in my ears or in my speaker, regardless of what device I'm using. Uh, then most of the apps have pretty similar features across the rest of the spectrum, including a sleep timer, your normal play pause controls, and things like that. But uh, voice enhance or voice boost and trim silence or remove silence or speed boost, those different things are going to be uh, pretty standard across whatever apps you're using if they're third party. Most of the first party apps don't provide this feature. And so that's just one of the ways why, uh, one of the reasons why you might want to step out of your comfort zone a little bit and check out one of these third party apps. Because I've got five days of life I can use. I might go to Disneyland. This is uh, the one last thing that I want to talk about with podcasts, and uh, actually Jeff here in the studio brought this up, and I thought it was a great thing to talk about. Uh, most of the time, you may know of podcasts, uh, or at least heard of podcasts, as an audio format. And that is because that is essentially where it started uh, with, with the launch of podcasts, these tiny little audio files that you could download to your device and listen on the go. They started out as audio. Then the video boom came along, uh, the show you may be watching on YouTube, for example, and we realized, uh, Twit was one of the first to kind of uh, definitely hit this up, was the ability to combine video and audio together. So you could also be watching this in the podcast app that you choose to use. Uh, the idea is that regardless of if you're wanting to watch physically or listen while you're driving, while you're doing the dishes, what have you, you have both of those options available. So there's both a video portion that of course includes the audio, and then essentially an audio stream which just strips out the video. That's how we work. There are some shows that are different. There are some podcasts out there that are uh, based around tutorials and things like that. So you might see something playing on the screen as the person's talking about it, teaching you how to use a feature. So there are all sorts of different ways. But yes, subscribing uh, within the app to our video feed gives you that video portion as well, whereas just the audio on its own will give you the audio. Uh, or you can follow us on YouTube if you'd like to do that. That is the basics. I mean, it is as simple as finding the right link and sending that to the person who wants to subscribe to the show. Then kind of filling them in on the, the proper terms and what they mean, what subscribe means, what it means to actually download the show, how to find it. If you are sharing podcasts with another person, giving the title alone really is kind of uh, not enough. It can be difficult to properly go into the app to know which search term to use, what, what it means whenever I tap on it. There are a lot of different apps with a lot of different ways to just play content versus subscribe to it. And most of the time, a person who's wanting to check out a show is wanting to subscribe to the show. So giving them those links is, is a really helpful way. Uh, once they have the proper link that they need, they tap on it, it opens in the app that they want, they hit that subscribe button, and the rest is taken care of for them. And then of course, if you want to get adventurous and step outside of the default apps, you can check out apps like Pocket Casts, Overcast, Castro, and many of the others which have plenty of fun features for you to try. So dig in, and of course, be sure to share this with any family member, any friend who needs help figuring out how to subscribe to podcasts like Hands on iOS. You head to twit.tv slash HOI, and we've got all the links there for you to check out the show. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.